Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Plant Yourself podcast daily edition, weekday edition. I'm Howard Jacobson, your host, and welcome to COVID-19 North American shutdown lockdown edition day five. So this is my first day back. Uh, yesterday, I just gave a uh, overview of the of the trip home. Um, but today I have stuff to talk about. Um, and the thing that I've been thinking about a lot is self care. And it's interesting, a lot of us who are privileged enough to have a home to be able to be in who can either work from home, or if we can't go out to work, don't have to worry about food and money day to day. You know, so those of us who are not marginalized, those of us who have some resources, um, a lot of us are taking it as sort of like this weird little vacation and we're looking for for bright sides and we're looking for upsides. And of course, there are people for whom that's simply not possible. And so I want to urge all of us to be cognizant of that, that this isn't, a, you know, a joke for a lot of people, even people who are who are healthy, who aren't suffering physical ailments from the virus. Um, you know, was it 10 million unemployed that there's a lot of people for whom what I'm going to talk about today simply is irrelevant. They're you know, struggling to survive. And yet for the for those of us who can see a silver lining, whether for ourselves or for society globally, you know, I'm seeing these photographs of cities that are clear, smog free, where we have really long sight lines to mountains. I go outside and there's no chemtrails from um, from airliners. There's no there's much less noise. There's no traffic on my street. The pork industry has stopped. You know, the, the Smithfield, one of the biggest pork producers, has has shut down until further notice. People, you know, dairy industry is dumping milk. You know, we may end up with a net reduction in the death rate from all the things that are happening. You know, climate change is slowing. Um, and a lot of us are at home with out the things to do that we normally do. And so, of course, you know, there's this period where people are binge watching Netflix and Amazon Prime and, and Tiger King and all these things. But that gets old. And a lot of people are posting about learning new skills. And in our community, a lot of people are, are able to take care of themselves in ways that just didn't seem possible before. People get up at five, they're busy, they're running around, they're, they're uh, responsible professionals, taking care of work, taking care of family, having community obligations. And so if there was a meditation, it was one or two minutes. If there was a stress reduction, it was, you know, OK, I'll take an extra five minutes in the bath with some salts or a candle or a cup of tea. But it really wasn't me time. And now people are discovering that there is time for me time and. It can expand. So, you know, you start doing one thing. OK, I'm going to meditate in the morning. Oh, I'll do 15 or 20 minutes. That'll be really nice. Um, and then, well, I don't have anything else to do. Why don't I try 30? Or now I'm going to do a, a streaming uh, workout. I'm going to do Pilates or a yoga workout or some you know, in-home strength training. And then uh, now I get to do some stretching, some flexibility work that I haven't done in a while. Hey, I'm going to journal. Hey, I'm going to uh, learn to read. Uh, I'm going to learn something new by reading it or watching YouTube videos. And I think people are starting to get worried, like, what happens when things go back to normal? Like, I don't want to give this up. I don't want to stop doing this self care. So for, you know, to some extent, this can be like a vacation period for those of us who are fortunate enough to be able to to ride this out. And there's nothing wrong with saying these three weeks or these six weeks are going to be a hiatus from my regular life. I'm just going to kind of soak in the self care and kind of you know collect it like a like a fat soluble vitamin and it'll be with me and I'll have it uh, as I go back out into life. And for a lot of us, of course, the self care 
is balanced out by the anxiety and the panic we feel and the fear. But even for those of us for whom we're doing OK emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, um, these self care regimens and the expanded regimen and the, you know, the, the hours that we can put into it. What do we do with that? Do we organize our lives going forward so that we have those hours? Well, I might argue that that's not a bad way for humanity to go. Now, it might not be individually practical, but as a as a as a social movement, the idea that people have time for themselves and they have time for leisure and time for growth and are not like if we, if we just look at it globally as, as an economy, as a civilization, clearly it's unsustainable the way we've been going. And to see all the positives that have come out of our civilization grinding to a halt, you know, if if there was a newspaper that the animals wrote by animals for animals about this pandemic, it would, it would look very different, would it not? than the uh, the way humans are looking at it, you know, the dogs would be going, oh, this is great. We get all these walks. We don't have to stay home all by ourselves in the crates anymore. Uh, the pigs would be going great. This is, you know, they're, they've, they've shut down the some of the, the slaughterhouses. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe they're going to reduce demand like there's a lot of good ancillary to the pain that we're going through. And I would argue that having time for self care and not devoting, you know, I mean, we we're like there is enough food produced. When you think about what is the function of an economy, it's not to make a few people rich. It's to provide a living, a life for a population. And that means food and shelter and community and fuel and very, very simple things. And, you know, there's this there's talk during the, the past uh, Democratic um, presidential campaign, especially with Andrew Yang about UBI, universal basic income. And the idea you know, doesn't never has seemed more relevant, along with you know, Bernie Sanders, Medicare for all that our health care should not be dependent on getting jobs, especially now that we have 16 million more unemployed than we had before. But this UBI, universal basic income, this idea that we should be able and every every animal that's not you know domesticated, every every wild animal has a basically universal basic income that just comes to it from living, from going out and being itself, from eating, from foraging, from making its own nests. And it's a very simple thing. And there's no animals out there that are hoarding, that are lording it over the others so that they have to work twice as hard. But in the human realm, we're, we feel like taking time for ourselves, you know, there's there's some guilt to that. And, oh, my God, I took three hours today. I went for a long walk. I meditated. I, uh, I Zoom chatted with friends. I'm not I'm not working. I'm not being as productive as I used to be. And for a lot of us, that's hard. And for a lot of us, it's really, really welcome. But let's assume that this period will end and the amount of self care that you are able to devote to yourself is going to go back down. Maybe not, hopefully not as far down as it used to be, but maybe not two or three hours a day, but maybe down to an hour or half an hour for some period of time. If you if you choose to return to that life or if for economic exigencies, you're forced to. What do we do with this time now? And I would argue that what we can do is not just engage in large amounts, large numbers of hours of self care, but get better at it to hone it in the same way that any skill when you start doing it, if you start you know, learning how to drive a car. It takes you a really long time to okay, sit down, put on your seatbelt, step on the brake, turn the key into the ignition. I know I'm dating myself. Most cars don't have keys to turn anymore. Um, putting it into reverse, letting go, like takes a long time to think of that. Whereas if you've been driving for a bunch of years, you do it without even thinking. Or as my son is learning pieces on the guitar, when he first gets a new piece, he has to play it really slowly and plays it slowly and again and again and again and develops speed and automaticity over time. I think there are ways in which we can, first of all, assess what kinds of self care really give us a return. 
Like for me, like I could do self care all day. There's there's so many th things on my list. I could do this stretch. I could do this exercise. I could do that meditation. I could do that journaling. I could do these morning pages. I mean, there's no end to it. But to, to have this time allows me to assess which investments of time are really producing value for me and for my family and my community and my world. What's making me helping me become the kind of person that I want to be and helping me maintain that. And the second thing is to find elements of self care where we can get better at it so that we don't need the full hour. Maybe there's kinds of there's a yoga where, yes, an hour is great, but here's the five minutes that really makes a difference for me. Maybe you're going to do a, you know, a two hour whole breathing thing and then you discover here's the 15 minutes that I'm going to uh, varnish until it becomes a beautiful thing that I can incorporate into my day at a moment's notice. Right. So rather than just thinking of this period of self care as a blip in time, it's wonderful now and it's going to go away. If if that's how you're feeling, think of the self care that you can provide to yourself as an assessment and as uh, a, a self development to getting to figuring out what is it that you really want to include in your self care regimen and how can you be more efficient at it in the future. And that third thing to say, maybe when things return to whatever normal will look like, maybe more self care is better. Maybe it's better for me. Maybe it's better for my family. Maybe yeah, they're going to be trade offs because we have 24 hours in a day and we can't do everything. So it means something's going to have to give. But maybe as individuals and families and communities and a society, we can prioritize taking care of ourselves. And that would allow us to take care of others and that would allow us to begin to take care of our planet. Because there's no question that if this hadn't happened, we're still hurtling towards environmental disaster. We're still in a society in which there is tremendous inequality and injustice and pain and suffering and poverty and disease. And it's unfairly distributed. So maybe this reset can allow us to not self indulge in self care, but to model what it is for a, for a, an organism and for a species and for an ecosystem to thrive. And I know there's a lot of negative that's coming along with this, and I don't want to mitigate any of that. I don't want to uh, make it seem that it doesn't exist. I want us to remember that there are people who are going through tremendous pain. A lot of the same people who are in much greater pain than we are, who don't have pandemic projects to do are those very same people who have been suffering all along. You know, this pandemic is tattling on us. It's showing us the cracks in our systems, in our values, in our civilization. And I think self care. Honoring the organism that we are plugging in our the cell phone of our soul so that we don't run out of juice, either physically or emotionally or spiritually or in terms of compassion. I think that these self care windows can become a portal to a better world. So if you find these valuable and you'd like to support the mission of the show, the tip jar is at plantyourself.com slash gift. If you're looking for some self care that I can provide, um, I have a guided relaxation exercises for the homebound and stressed out at plantyourself.com slash unstress. And you can uh, throw us nine dollars and ninety five cents to hear Josh Lajani read our new book, Use the Weight to Lose the Weight. And you can find that at sick to fit dot com slash badass. Thanks for listening or watching. Uh, see you again tomorrow. And as always, be well, my friends.